okay. I'm being yeah. interviewed. Yeah, we are talking with Peter de Jong. Peter, please say some things about you. Oh, um, you mean like um, uh, how I came into solution focus? For example. Or well, okay, I, I started a career as a sociologist and studied, uh, got graduate degrees in sociology and uh, I was very interested in symbolic interactionism in sociology. This uh, it's one of the major theoretical ideas in sociology uh -huh. that that people in interaction uh, uh, they create meaning, cultures, subcultures together. So uh -huh. that, that was a big that, that was very interesting to me. I taught courses like the sociology of uh -huh. deviance and and uh, focused on how deviant identities are formed and how social context plays such a big role in that. And then after 15 years of being a sociologist, I was working at a small college. They wanted to start a social work program and they had funds to send faculty back. And, and um, I said I would be interested in doing that and I would do it if, if I could, could uh, besides getting the a master's of social work degree, I could also work mm -hmm. in mental health for a couple of years and become credentialed. And so I went to a school which was very psychodynamically oriented and learned about transference and counter-transference mm -hmm. and uh, was practicing therapy. And uh, then I felt it was, I thought, I felt it was useful, but sometimes not useful. So I was looking and I read in the Family Therapy Network her about this idea of exception. Two paragraphs. Uh -huh. Steve DeShazer writes about exception. So that was the moment. Yeah. So the next day I went wow. and this, I went the next day, I had six clients. I asked everyone exception questions. Uh -huh. And I was amazed because they all had answers to what was difference. happening when, uh -huh. when, when the problem wasn't or when the problem was less severe. And I had never asked a question like that. In therapy. Uh -huh. So it was very striking to me. So then I went to BFTC and, and uh, four months later and, and took training and, and uh, got very interested. This was right at the beginning of when Steve was starting to write about language and, and uh, uh, an interactional view of therapy and uh -huh. how language works okay. in therapy. And so I got involved in a lot of those discussions. So that's the beginning of the adventure. So that was focused. the beginning of my solution. Yeah solution-focused adventure. And then um, I worked with INSU okay. on, on uh, some projects uh, in child welfare and uh, went back to my school and started a social work program and introduced, uh, uh, I was a director of the program, so I, <laughs> I changed the interviewing course to a solution-focused interviewing easy. course. I put a one-way <laughs> mirror in and, and uh, that course is still, okay. even, even though I've retired from that school, that oh, course okay. is still going. So when you when you think from today's perspective of your experience, mm -hmm. any suggestion to newcomers? Oh, regarding what? Well, very personal development, oh, solution focused approach. In, oh, I I think um, very striking to me is that is what Steve said that the way to become uh, more effective as a therapist to learn solution-focused therapy is, is uh, to watch it, which is how all the techniques were developed by watching through the mm -hmm. one-way mirror, right? And to do it, you know? So uh, it, even though it's important to read about it, it's very important to, to watch it watch. and see it being done and ask yourself those same kind of questions about, is this client making progress? What is it that the therapist might be uh -huh. doing that's that's useful in that respect? And and you know to carry that into one's own practice because I think we're always developing our way of of uh, being and and working with our clients. Okay, thanks, thanks for this suggestion. Yeah, guys, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.